it's me again, Skylar with Lean Frontiers, and I will be your host for today's webinar. We will not be fielding questions since we only have such a small time frame for the presentation. This webinar is being recorded, so check for an email after the presentation with the link to view the recording. The TWI Summit and Katakon 7 are virtual. You can check out the information on both summits at leanfrontiers.com forward slash summit. Please make sure that you do have a writing utensil and some paper for today's webinar. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce our facilitator for today, Sam Morgan. Sam discovered Lean three years ago through a company-wide deployment at The Standard, where he has worked for over seven years. Since then, Sam has dove in headfirst with passion and curiosity, engaging in the CI community at his office, in his community, and online. Inspired by Katie Anderson, Karen Ross, and his fellow K2C2 cohort friends, Sam started his daily hashtag 90 second purpose blog in May of last year and hasn't missed posting a day since. Shortly thereafter, Sam started a regular video feature, CI in Five. In these short, fast paced and fun interviews, Sam challenges your favorite CI friends to sum up what continuous improvement means to them in five minutes or less and in five words or less. Sam lives in Vancouver, Washington with his gorgeous bride, Sydney, and their three smart, witty, sharp, and beautiful children, Grace, Serena, and Judah. Sam is a huge sports fan and approves of all those who cheer for Manchester United, Portland Timbers, Portland Trailblazers, tra Trailblazers and Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> with that, I will hand it over to you. Thanks, Skylar, so much. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, with you all and really appreciate the opportunity to, to be here today. Um, it's um, really been a journey here the last nine months or so. And to come to this point today to be here with you, it's, um, well, it's just, again, it's an honor. So thank you um, to Lean Frontiers for this opportunity. Um, as a continuous improvement professional, what's always in our view is, is value. Um, what's the most valuable thing we can offer in this process? How can we provide value to our customer? And even in these days and times right now that we're in, we've experienced so much unrest and, and just craziness going on. It's caused us to reflect on a lot of things, like what can I do to make a difference? You know, and reflecting on those things of where are we going as a person, as a community, as a country, as a world, and why? So today I'm going to challenge you to think about and reflect on those questions. And we'll take a few moments to pause together and think through each of these moments and ask ourselves the question, uh, what's the point? So finding your purpose. Today I want to take you along my journey over the last 286 days and how I found my purpose. Uh, and along the way, I'll ask you to pause and reflect, to think about seeing your purpose, knowing your purpose, sharing your purpose, and living your purpose as you look to find your purpose. But I have to warn you, these aren't a one, two, three, four step uh, to get to finding your purpose. It's not a formula, it's a process. And it's, it's one that's been an up and down roller coaster ride for me, and, um, but it's been a great journey. So as we think again about finding your purpose, we're gonna talk about seeing your purpose and knowing your purpose, sharing your purpose, and then finally living your purpose out. So if you're ready, get out your paper, get out your writing utensil, and let's uh, start down this journey. Now, again, the first part that I discovered as I've been uh, going on this journey of finding my purpose was seeing my purpose. So there's power in, in really seeing it clearly um, because it draws out what's inside of you that you can't express with words. See, as a seven or eight year old, I remember being in church very regularly, pulling out the bulletin, hope I'm not the only one here, and took out the back while the pastor was giving the sermon and I drew. I remember vividly drawing pictures of, of these robots with missiles on the back flying and battling each other across the bulletin. And I'd also draw really simple pictures of like hills and valleys and suns and little doves, because that's what I could draw. Um, so I can remember from a very young age, this whole childlike idea of drawing. So when I walked into the K2C2 cohort and one of the pre pre work was to do a drawing of purpose. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm not seven. This isn't, uh, 
uh, you know, kindergarten. But once I kind of got over that, I was able to have my purpose drawn out. And as you can see here on, on day one, what I shared was this picture of what felt to me for my purpose was a journey. And it was this journey on becoming a continuous improvement practitioner that really resonated with my heart. And that it would be a journey with cracks in the road and obstacles and challenges, but really there's hope, there's light, there's joy at the end of the journey that I was excited to go to. And that was pulling me towards it. So that's been powerful for me in drawing out. And then just a few days later, as I was continuing on in the, the cohort, I decided to reflect further on that and drew out some pictures of words that really resonated for me. You can see different words here like light and advocate and journey. And again, I'm not a Van Gogh here. I don't have, claim to have any artistic ability whatsoever, but it really was uh, a joy-filled experience for me to be able to draw out my um, purpose and meaning in my life that resonated for me at that point. So at that point in time, I came to my purpose and reflected and, and found it to be to empower others and help them see the light within. And that was really um, just, again, a, a powerful moment to be able to come up with that and think about that for me. So <clears throat> now what I want us to think about is, again, this power of drawing it out. Again, it's drawing out something that you can't express with words. And you can see here as I continued on, um, even past when K2C2 had ended the coaching cohort, that I was continuing to do uh, daily purpose, intent, and action, and reflection. And, and those daily actions and reflections many times consisted of drawings. And those drawings really came out of the reflection and helped me express, again, what I couldn't really express <laughs> with words, what was meaningful to me. And, and that's been a, just, again, a super powerful part of my journey in discovering uh, my purpose. Now, what I wanna do is pause for just a second and have you think about your purpose. As I've talked about purpose and having that drawn out, maybe there are some, some things that have really resonated or things that have been bubbling up in your, in your heart. And so I want us to take a moment to think about your purpose. I want you to draw out your purpose on the piece of paper that you had beforehand. Let's think about what are you passionate about? What do you lose yourself in? What fills you up when you do it? And then when you're done, you're just so energized and you wanna to talk to all your friends and family about it. And lastly, and most importantly, what resonates with your heart? So what I'd like for you to do right now is take out that piece of paper Start drawing out what your purpose is here. We'll take a minute, play some calm music. And again, there's no censoring, no self-editing, just write, just draw out what really resonates for you. And when you're done, I'd like for you to just place done in the chat so we can kind of get an idea of people uh, as they're completing it. But again, let's take a moment, play some calm music and come back in about a minute and think uh, as you think about and draw out your purpose. this process of discovering our purpose is in, in drawing it out. Now, as I continued on along my journey, a big part of finding my purpose was, was knowing it. And there's power in knowing because it gives you confidence in 
the direction you're heading because you know that direction. And so there's power in that. And there's power in writing it out. I think about when I was coming through the K2C2 uh, cohort and seven days in, every day we would have this exercise of writing out our purpose, the top of the page, putting our intent and action for the day. And that act of writing out a purpose. Um, and then again, taking that idea of uh, drawing it out. You can see in this picture that I've got this idea of um, empowering, um, advocating with the megaphone and the glasses. So at that point in that first week, my purpose transformed to empower and advocate through a continuous improvement lens. And again, this isn't a, a, a step, like you go from A to B to C to D. This is a very, um, a process that, that, um, that evolves over time uh, as you discover and find your purpose. So even a week later, as I was thinking further about my purpose and, and again, doing more drawings here, you can see this idea of open and light coming out and energizing. And that transformed as I reflected further on it about how my purpose was to empower, advocate and energize through a continuous improvement lens. So being able to, again, take the drawings and then writing it out, putting words to it, um, is helping you as you continue to discover and surface what your purpose really is. And again, that's, I think that's a super powerful part of being able to explore and find your purpose. So right now, I want us to again take another minute to pause and reflect and think about your purpose. Um, this idea of writing it out. I want you to take a minute to write your purpose right now. Again, this is just a rough draft. It's just start starting the process, starting on the journey. So take a moment, again, we're gonna play some, some calm music for about a minute here. Close your eyes. Slow down and take a few deep breaths. Reflect on your drawings that you just drew just a few minutes ago. Think about those drawings and write what you see, not just with your head, because we can certainly get in our heads and think about and analyze the words writing. Don't do that, because that will inhibit um, the real growth and finding your purpose here. Do it with your heart. What is resonating with your heart right now in this moment from those drawings that you just drew? What word or phrase resonates with you? So take this minute to do that. And then when you're done, if you'd be so kind as to share that purpose in the chat, and we can all share and encourage one, each, one another in seeing our purposes being written out. So again, let's take a moment to reflect on that, think about that, and write it out. And we'll come back here in just about a minute. continues on for you is just again a starting point in discovering and finding your purpose as you write it out. So the next step in my journey and the journey in finding purpose for me was sharing my purpose. And there's really power in sharing because it gives you the support and encouragement and accountability to live out your purpose. You see, when you have people that love you and care about you and want to see you grow and become your best self, and when you share your purpose, they will do everything in their power to support you. And I found that to be true for myself, especially as I continued on in the K2C2 community. You see, during the K2C2 community, after it ended, 
there was a handful of us that were wanting to connect and, and really work on improving our coaching skills. And two uh, folks that I now call really good friends, Adam Lawrence and Krista Hens, and I agreed to form a coaching triad where we would meet every Monday evening and work on coaching each other and encouraging each other. And through that, we got to know each other and got to know each other's purposes, some of the struggles we were having and the victories we were having. And through that process in day 136, I remember Adam asking me on one of those Monday nights, as I was reflecting on my weekly CI and five videos and my daily 90 second purpose videos and some challenges that I was having and be able to handle the workload of those. And he said, Sam, are you still getting joy out of those? Are those bringing you enjoyment? And I really couldn't answer that question with a strong affirmative yes. And so it caused me that, that moment to pause and reflect on day 137, you can see here, and really think about what do I have joy in? Um, and I drew out this drawing you can see in the bottom corner of a lighthouse, of a light, of a megaphone. Those were the things that, the, those pictures that really resonated for me. And that being a light on the continuous improvement journey was, was really for me, what my purpose was becoming. I could see it more clearly. Again, this idea of being able to see it, to know it and to speak it. Again, it's not a step-by-step -step journey where you're gonna get to it, but it is a part of the process. And so you can see here on day 138 where my purpose changed to be a light on the continuous improvement journey. And that's what my purpose was at that point where it had transformed into being. And really, it was just, again, another powerful moment in this process over the last nine plus months of being able to figure out my purpose. And then um, shortly thereafter, um, a good friend of mine and someone I'd call a mentor, Karen Ross, um, she and I had been connecting since the very first day. Um, and I really looked to her for a lot of her wisdom and insight around continuous improvement and especially around purpose. And so she and I had lots of conversations uh, via video chat and also on LinkedIn. And um, as she, um, as I was reflecting in um, later on day uh, 233, um, I was thinking about these things of what, um, what is it to truly live? I had just been a part of a, a prayer meeting where we had been considering some of these things in our life to truly live. And this was the drawing that came out of that. The things that, that were important to me to truly live was to be someone of peace, to breathe, my home, focus, God, and love. These are all these pictures that were being drawn out. And Karen saw this in one of my, um, my daily 90 second purpose videos. And she sent me a message and I'll never forget. She's like, Sam, is that, do you see continuous improvement? I know that's what you've got in your purpose, but is that really? Um, who you are? Is that really what your purpose is about? Or could it be just, could it just be um, bigger? Um, and bigger in the terms of, it doesn't have to include that. Because see, purpose isn't just in this one area of our life, our profession. Purpose is in every area of our life. We live it out in every area of our life. And so that was just really, again, having somebody in my life to be able to speak that out to me because she knew my purpose, she was aware of it. And I reflected on that on day 240, had a conversation with her. And she was, she said, Sam, could it just be that you're a light? And I really had to reflect deeply about that because I had so much tied up in, and who my image was of these videos. And if I change my purpose, what would that mean? But really it needed to be what was resonating, what's resonating with my heart. And so you can see here on that day, I took to really reflecting deeper that my purpose was to be a light to my wife, to my kids, to my family, to my friends, to my community and to the world. And really as I drew that out, I wanted to, to be a light to my wife by embracing her, to my kids by providing them strength and support, to my family to be a shoulder to cry on, to my friends I wanted to be a listening ear. To my coworkers, I wanted to be someone that could empower and provide guidance. And to my community, I wanted to be someone who could be an advocate for those who don't have a voice. So you see, being a light, having purpose 
isn't just in one lane of our life. It encompasses all of the areas of our life. And it took that moment, that conversation with someone who cared about me to make that clearer to me. So I want to encourage you now to reflect on that. Who is it in your life? A loved one, a friend, a cousin, a coworker that supports you, that knows you, that knows what that you're trying to find purpose in your life, that you would commit to sharing your purpose with within the next 24 hours. I want you to take a moment here in this next minute, again, we'll play the music and just reflect on that. Write the name of that person on your paper that you just drew on and wrote your purpose on. And then type the name of that person in the chat, whether it's their initials, you don't do their full name, just their first name, initials, the name of the relative, whoever it might be just as a means of taking an action step towards speaking out your purpose. So take a moment, let's reflect on that. Pause for a moment and think about that. We'll be back in a moment to talk about our last step of living out of Christ. someone that you could share your purpose with so that you can continue on as you discover and think about your purpose. Now in my journey as I continued along, the last step that I saw about how to find your purpose is to live your purpose out. You see, we could, we could see our purpose, we could know our purpose, we could even share our purpose, but really it means nothing unless we're living our purpose out. So the real power is in that living out. It gives you fulfillment because you're doing what you were created to do. And I think again of my journey here over the last 286 days since I started, day one of the K2C2 cohort and community, when I took the, the step, my intention and in action was to say yes to something I wouldn't normally say yes to or say no to something I wouldn't normally say no to. And that for me was putting myself out in the broader community. See, I don't. I'm very performance-based. I want everybody to see me in a certain light. So I was really scared and have been scared to do that. So in that moment, I said to myself, well, I could, I could post a video. I could uh, you know, record a video about what my process is here with K2C2 and what I'm, you know, my purpose is and what my intention is. And so that's where this whole 90-second purpose idea came out of. I started on day one, you can see right here in this same area, same tree, and um, I reflected on that purpose, intent, and action. And it was right around 90 seconds or so. And the next day I thought, well, I could do that again. That was kind of cool. And again, it was right around that 90 seconds and I thought to myself, well, 90 seconds and we're talking about purpose, that sounds kind of like 90 second purpose. I could do this every day and reflect on my purpose, intent, and action. And Wow, what a journey it's been since then, um, living that out. In day 100, um, I had been, I'd been thinking about for the past um, month or two before, even as I, right after I shortly started the 90 Second Purpose videos, of uh, this idea of trying to grow my knowledge and my connection with other continuous improvement professionals. Because you see, I've only been uh, someone who's been in the continuous improvement field for about, about three years or so. And there's so many folks out there that I could learn from and connect with. And so I had this idea to reach out to um, folks in the continuous improvement community and have them share their wisdom. So again, shining the light on them and have them share what continuous improvement means to them in five minutes or less 
and in five words or less. So CI in five, continuous improvement in five. And so on day 100, I put out my first episode of CI in five with my good friend again, Karen Ross. And since then I've met uh, 16 other great professionals, uh, beautiful people, I shared so many amazing things that I've learned from and others have commented that they've learned from. And it's just been honestly such a fun part of my process to be able to learn and then share um, from others. Then as I continued on along the last, uh, this journey, in day 174, I had the privilege of being able to take part in the When the Brothers Meet at Gemba webinar with my great friend, um, Deandra Wardell. She is just, uh, just a super amazing lady who is such a great advocate. She's shining the light on issues of social injustice and racism and joined some brothers here in talking about and shining a light on those issues that have especially become to light here in the last year or so. And being able to share my story um, about my son, Judah, who is a young man of color and also autistic. And thinking about in 15 years, if you were to knock on the front door of Standard Insurance Company where I work, would he be offered an opportunity to work there? Would they see past all of the things that other people might see and really see the beautiful, smart, um, talented young man he is? And being able to advocate um, for him and for other young men like him was so powerful for me, so fulfilling to me that I can't even express it with words. To be able to tell his story and advocate for him, it was a beautiful, beautiful opportunity that it was such a, it was such a privilege for me to be a part of with Deandra and these other men. And then lastly, I think about today and this opportunity to meet with you, given to me um, by Lean Frontiers. Being able to share about purpose, you see, I'm still on the journey myself. I don't got it all figured out to, I don't have this all figured out about purpose. There's so many other people who've been on this journey that I've engaged with um, in the last nine months that have been doing this for 15 years in the longer. And so I, it's an honor to be here and to speak about this. So being able to walk out, being a light here is the culmination of that journey for me. And so now I want us to really think about that. Think about what does it mean for you to walk out your purpose, to live this out? So again, we're gonna take one final um, minute of reflection to think of one small step you can take to live out your purpose this week. You've seen it, you've written it out, and then you've committed to sharing it. And now I want you to take a minute to reflect on all those things and write out one small step. Again, if your purpose is to be a giver, how can you do that? Maybe shoveling snow right now would be probably an appropriate thing or whatever. It doesn't have to be just something small to Start the momentum again of, of thinking about your purpose. I want you to take a moment, write that out on your paper. And then when you're done, type it in the chat. And then we'll uh, come back and we'll um, close things up with some final thoughts here. But again, take that moment to reflect and think of one small action step that you can take to live out that purpose that you've been exploring here over the last few minutes. We'll come back here in just a moment. sharing those action steps and even those little pieces are going to make such a big meaning to the people that you're going to be to be taking those action steps with and also more importantly for yourself as you continue to dive into your purpose and find your purpose um, I'm just floored at, at all these steps that you guys will be taking um, to make a difference for yourself and for others so if you'd like to explore more we've talked a lot about purpose we've talked a lot about finding your purpose and I found 
on my journey, a great jumpstart to that was uh, the K2C2 community with Katie and Karen, Katie Anderson and Carrie, um, Karen Ross. And they start a new one here in a couple of weeks. Reach out to them. I'm sure they'd be happy to have you. They'd love to have you there and you can explore more of your purpose, intent and action and get yourself continuing to um, move forward on this journey of exploring your purpose. So I wanna leave you with a final thought here and something that has been powerful for me. A purpose is not something that you're working towards. It's something that you're living out of, who you are. So I really wanna encourage you, be who you are, not who you want to become. And then you'll become who you've always dreamed of being. Again, I wanna thank Lean Frontiers for this opportunity to be here and talk about purpose, a topic that I'm passionate about. And I would love to stay in touch and, and continue the conversation around purpose. Of course, if you aren't connected with me on LinkedIn, feel free to reach out and connect that way. Um, and also um, an idea that's germinating my mind is starting a community around purpose on LinkedIn, live on purpose. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, feel free to message me. I'd love to start that up, a place where we could share these things that we're learning and growing on. Again, it's a journey. None of us is all the way there in terms of finding our purpose or living our purpose out, but we can certainly form a community where we can encourage each other in that. And lastly, of course, feel free to subscribe. Find all my videos, my 90 second purpose videos. There's 284 because there were two days that I missed due to connection issues, but there's always been a post for 286 days. You can find those there and every one of my CI in five episodes are there. If you'd like to go back and check it out. And if, if you have a CI in five you love to share, I would love to be in connection with you. So please message me and we can set up a time to set up that interview and have you share your CI in five so you can shine your light in the world. Again, thanks once again to the Lean Frontiers. And thank you, Skylar, once again. Thank you, everybody, for your time today. Thank you so much, Sam. That was beautiful. I really enjoyed that. Um, thank you to everybody who participated today and for sending in all your chats. You guys were great. If you have any questions, do let myself or Sam know. And like I said, um, this is being recorded, so you will get a link to view the recording. Everybody have a good rest of your week and weekend. We'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.